Should you give Iron Sworn a try? In my opinion, if it's fantasy you're after, then yes. Let's take a look at it. So Iron Sworn is a solo RPG. In a solo RPG, you can sort of play in these three different modes. A solo RPG can allow you to play by yourself. It can allow you to play in a group as well, with none of you being the Game Master and you're sort of playing in a more cooperative way. And you can also play with a Game Master. The Iron Swan RPG allows you to do all three of these. And the way this works is that you'll roll on random tables that we call the Oracles. Some solo RPG systems don't have settings of their own, such as the GM Mythic Emulator. With that, you can play in any RPG setting you want. With Iron Sworn though, Iron Sworn, since it's an actual game system in itself, it comes with its own sort of standalone setting. And that setting is that of the Ironlands. The Ironlands are a cold continent, isolated. Think of Scandinavia and your Viking adventures. There's lots of untamed land, there's lots of animals everywhere, there's, you know, bandits to face off against. Lots of exploration, lots of hidden dangers in the past. You can of course take Iron Swan and not play it in the Ironlands. You can take that and play it in a similar setting that you want. So if you want to set a game in Skyrim, you can take Iron Swan, tweak a few things and set it in Skyrim. The main big overarching theme though that should sort of stay the same is that everyone should care about their word and honour as vows and keeping your vows and swearing them and keeping your oaths is sort of a very big component of how Iron Sworn works. The game mechanics are similar to the Powered by the Apocalypse games. I'm talking about Dungeon World and Apocalypse World. You have five stats. These are Edge, Iron, Heart, Shadow and Wit. Edge is about speed, Heart is about courage and communicating with others, Iron is your, your strength and your constitution, Shadow is how deceitful or sneaky you are, and wit is, as it says, your wits, how smart or intelligent or how perceptive you are at doing certain things. Now, unlike Dungeons and Dragons, we won't be rolling a large set of arrays like 10 or 14 or 16. We only care about the modifiers to the dice rolls. So instead, we'll simply say things like edge plus two, wit minus one, iron zero. Things like health, mental power and supply are also abstracted. They all start at five and they all just count down. Health is very obvious. Spirit is things like stress or mental stress and supply would include things like food and water, but also things like ammunition and arrows and also money. So what roles do you make? Similar to Powered by the Apocalypse, Iron Sworn uses something called moves instead of skill checks. When you do something in the fiction, Instead of making a role such as a perception role or a persuasion role, you will instead trigger a relevant move. I may do a whole video on Powered by the Apocalypse games, but for now all you have to know is that the basic premise is that we don't roll d20s, instead we roll two d6s, two six-sided die. We'll add our modifier from our stat to the roll depending on what the move asks us to do. So for example, if we had an edge of zero, we'd roll 2d6 plus zero. We also have to roll what we call challenge die. These are two 10-sided dices. We'll roll the 2d10s, the 2d6s with the modifier. If our roll is in the middle of the d10s, then we get a partial success or a weak hit. If it's higher, then we get a strong hit or a success. If it's lower than the d10s, then we fail or miss. So, for example, if we had rolled a d10 of 4 and a d10 of 7, and we roll 2d6 plus 0 and got a 6, that would be a weak hit or a partial success. If instead we had rolled an 8, then that would be higher than the 7, and that would be a strong hit. If instead, however, we had rolled a 2, then that's below the four, and so that's a weak hit or a miss. Now we can look at the moves. Now the important thing to keep in mind is that for moves to work, the fiction has to come first. You don't go into it thinking, I want to roll a persuade check on this guard. No, you try to talk to the guard and depending on what you do, it activates a move or it activates a different move, etc, etc. And the context of the situation is also quite important. The two moves we have 
are face danger and compel. So let's look at this scenario. You have been tasked with stealing an item from this fortress. The way in is that you've decided you're going to go right through the front door by convincing the guard at the front door to just let you walk in. In order to do this, you would go up to the guard and you would try and convince him. And let's say you've decided that you want to just persuade him without lying to him. You just want him to let you in. You won't make a persuasion check or a deception check. You trying to persuade the guard will trigger the compel move. You can see the trigger for the compel move here. It's when you attempt to persuade someone to do something, envision your approach. What you roll will depend again on the fiction and how you did it. If I was lying, I'd roll shadow. If I was intimidating, I'd roll iron. If I try and charm or barter, I'd roll heart. Since I'm trying to persuade this guy, I will roll heart. And if I get a weak hit, let's say, you can see that it's a partial success, as we talked about earlier. They would ask something of me in return. In this case, let's just say that the guard asks for a bribe. And in that case, I just lower the supply from five to four because, as we said, supply is abstracted in this system. Once I'm in the fort, if I was sneaking around and a guard caught me and I had to fast talk my way out of the situation, I wouldn't roll compel, I'd roll face danger because face danger makes a lot more contextual sense in this instance. I'm trying to convince someone to you know, not do something to me, whereas compel is convincing someone to do something for you. And that's kind of the distinction I make between the two moves. So on face danger, we can see that it's when you attempt something risky or react to an imminent threat. In this situation, fast talking him out would be heart again. On a strong hit, let's say we succeed, we take plus one momentum, which will be useful to us later. As part of making your character, your character will also get asset cards to help them. These are just cards that have extra moves on them that only your character, since they have the card, has the ability to use. And since every character will have different assets, it makes your character unique to you and makes you feel like the hero of the story. Vows in Iron Sworn are how you progress in the system and what you work towards. A vow is a quest, and when you make it, you will decide the difficulty of your quest from troublesome to epic. Quests attract like clocks from other systems. They each have 10 boxes that you have to fill up slowly. When you reach a milestone in a quest, you will tick a certain number of boxes. For example, for troublesome, you will tick three boxes every time you reach a milestone in a quest. Whereas for formidable, you will tick only one. Milestones are just whenever we feel like we've made progress in the quest. So in our heist example, let's say convincing the guard to let us in through the door was a milestone and fast talking the other guard who caught us was another milestone. If this heist vow we have going on is only troublesome, then each of those would be three boxes ticked. But if this heist was a formidable one, it would only tick two. As you can see then, the higher the difficulty that you make the quest, the more time you will spend on it and the harder it will be. So that's why it's in your control as to what story you want to tell. If you want to spend more time in a certain quest, make it more difficult. If you're not interested in that sort of storyline, make it less difficult so that it gets over faster. You can end your quest anytime by ending the vow. You don't have to actually fill up all 10 boxes, but just know for now that the more boxes you fill up before ending your quest, the better the outcome will be for your character. Now we come on to the oracles. For me, the very process of setting these quests and vows and completing them is enough for me to tell my story. But sometimes you do want some surprises to come and take you by surprise. And so the oracle is what will help you there. It is essentially just a table that tells you whether you get a yes answer to a question you ask or a no answer to a question you ask. And you set the likelihood of that happening. So I could have asked, does this guard want a bribe to let me in if I hadn't already decided that that's what I wanted to happen? Similar to the other table is pay the price. And this is just a table that will give you consequences for actions your character takes when they fail. But remember before looking at this table that the most obvious thing that could happen to your character is what you should make happen. If you're facing down a warrior with an axe, and you fail your face danger roll, you don't have to roll on this table, the axe just hits you in the face. And with that, I should add that all of these oracles and tables are just there to help you tell your story. 
If you roll on the oracle and it doesn't make sense, ignore it and carry on. If you roll something that is a bit weird or doesn't help your story in any way, just ignore it and carry on. And that is part of the Iron Swan rules, that if something doesn't make sense, just carry on and tell your story. And try not to roll for every little thing. Try and use what makes logical and contextual sense. Remember, your goal is to tell a story, not play Random Table Simulator 2022. Although I do love random tables. Now, I didn't go into the full details of the system because we'd be here for over an hour. But I think that Iron Sworn is an incredibly good system to start out with if you're looking to get into solo RPGs and you want a system that complements that. If you want to play your favorite RPG system solo, then for that I do recommend the GM Mythic Emulator, and you can learn more about the GM Mythic Emulator by watching this video right here. Thank you for listening to this video. If you enjoyed it, critically hit the like button and comment down below some of your thoughts on Iron Sworn.